Miss Shelby Davis, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. This is I think this is my first my first podcast. Oh, uh, so nice. far. Wow, you know, it's uh it's one of my early ones too. I mean, I assume that we'll both end up very famous and doing lots of podcasts and interviews and all that. So That's uh, what I'm hoping. Yeah, so we'll just shooting, get used to it now. Shooting for Joe Rogan status. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to, to join us. And um, mm -hmm. you're going to be sort of introduced in this way to the, the ME seminar students. Um, the students are m mostly first year students, um, but then there are also a, a, a pretty good number of transfer students that are new to St. Martin's. And so they're sort of getting oriented in the program and getting oriented in, into our uh, sort of university environment and, and all that. So you are an important person to know, so I'm glad that you decided to join us and, and um, uh, introduce yourself a bit. So I'll do a little introduction of you. So I'll introduce our guest. Um, Shelby Davis is a uh, master of mechanical engineering. She got her master's degree at the illustrious St. Martin's University. Um, and in addition to having a master's from St. Martin's University in mechanical engineering, she has a bachelor of science uh, from St. Uh, Seattle Pacific University um, mm -hmm. from several, uh, not several years, but a few years back. It's impossible that it's several years back. It looks like 2014. Uh, 2014, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so uh, Shelby is uh, a, a, a lab instructor for us and teaches several uh, of our courses, especially in the um, energy and fluids concentration, um, as well as some of the, the lab courses. Um, and I'll, I'll let Shelby introduce some of the other stuff that she does. But um, yeah, uh, we have um, uh, also a background uh, on Shelby. She worked for um, Puget Sound Energy as an engineer, sort of um, after her bachelor's degree and before her master's degree. And so hopefully we'll get to hear a little bit about that experience as well, because we're uh, uh, all interested to hear about what's going on in industry and how um, folks have had experiences there. So um, yeah, so I guess a final welcome to the show, Shelby. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be on the podcast. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. Well, thanks. Um, so we are going to start out um, with, a, you know, a couple, couple of questions, uh, a couple softball questions, and we'll just see where it goes. Um, so can you tell us, I, I, in the introduction, I started us out here, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about your educational path? Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure how far back you want me to go, but I would say, I would say this is relevant because there might be some folks who have had a similar experience, but I actually was, um, as a, you know, middle school, high school student, I was homeschooled. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I did that. I also went to public school, so I had a little mix. And um, after that, I, I in, in high school, I, I enjoyed calculus and some of the heavier math. So I did look into engineering and looked at different schools. I actually also applied to St. Martin's. I ended up going for undergrad to Seattle Pacific University. And I chose mechanical engineering. There are no other engineers in my family. And I don't know if I knew what engineering was when I decided to be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it sounded good and it sounded like there was a lot of math and math and physics and science. So I went with that. Uh, so mm -hmm. I ended up going through four years, um, of mechanical engineering. And I don't think that there was a time that I felt like I didn't want to do it, which was a good sign uh, yeah. when I was in school. And then after... 
So this goes a little bit into working, but I did have an internship at uh, Seattle City Light. It was a project management engineering internship. I did that between my junior and senior year of undergrad, and that was um, that was an interesting experience. I learned a lot, uh, some about engineering and some about just working in general. Uh, I had j jobs prior to that, but not in engineering. So I did that, and then I. Um, was hired at Puget Sound Energy. Uh, I don't think I had graduated yet and I had a job offer. And then um, I think I started working about a few weeks after I graduated. So I went right into it. Mm. Uh, that was, I was there for about a year and a half, maybe two years, something like that. And then uh, I lived in Seattle, and then I decided to move back and pursue my master's. I, I'm from Olympia, so I moved back home and attended St. Martin's, and I met you, actually. Yeah, that's you right. You were uh, one of my professors, so. That's right, and then, yeah. Uh, long time ago. Good or, times. Yeah, Those were good times. Kind of feels like a while back. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so I graduated. I taught a couple classes when I was in my master's program lab a lab class or two or something like that. But then I then I started working full time after I graduated for St. Martin's in the engineering department. So that's kind of my my education slash work history, I suppose. Yeah. Engineering history. And then um uh you've been at St. Martin's as an instructor, is it has it been three years now? I think it's three about three years. Yeah, I think this yeah. is my third yeah, this is my third fall. Mm. semester here so so I can attest uh, to the fact that before Shelby started as our lab instructor um, the labs were in relative disarray um, and there were uh, a lot of fires that needed to be put out at the last minute um, to get a, a given lab exercise done and as a lab uh, as a, an instructor of some of the labs that um, I've taught, so like the ME316 lab, for instance, uh, I was very, very uh, pleased that Shelby decided to join us because um, I was familiar, obviously, with Shelby, and um, I was, I was so, I was so happy that you know when you were, when you were uh, applying, I was like, okay, she's gonna get this place like all organized. We're gonna like finally get the equipment in order, you know, so that it's not at the last minute. Oh, this piece of equipment's not working. Uh, she's gonna be proactive, and that has all come true. And oh. it's it's, uh, it's been awesome uh, working with you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it is. It's actually a pretty fun job. I like it. It definitely is different all the time, which is why I like it. And mm. yeah, putting out the fires. It's. I've, I've come to really enjoy that actually. <laughs> oh yeah, nice, nice, good for you, good for you. Yeah. And is that is that kind of different than uh, the work that you did uh, at Puget Sound Energy? Uh, were you sort of a, a putting out fires person? I know we're gonna get into some details of that work, mm -hmm. but um, is that was that your role there too, or? So I did do a little bit of work that was on the maintenance side of things, and that was definitely putting out fires. I found that version of it to be fairly stressful, mm. whereas I don't find it to be as stressful here. And that, I mean, that's, you know, that could be going into the whole soapbox part of this right, uh, right. Mm. part, you know, kind of jumping ahead. But oh, that's um, okay. you have to find something that, that fits, you know, mm -hmm. you. So this this is a better vibe for you then. Yeah. This, yeah. 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 My jobs have been great regardless, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I, I like I like this job a lot. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, that's that's good um, because you're good at it. And so that's always nice when those two meet up. Um, it's, it's nice when what you're good at and uh, uh, what you like are the same thing. Um. True. True. <laughs> Man. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So uh, what was it that first interested you in mechanical engineering? 
really good question. Um, again, like I said, I, I don't think I knew what engineering was when I decided to do it, but I will tell you that I had one of those stories like a lot of and future engineers have where, you know, they say, I like to take things apart and put them back together. And I did always like doing that. I know that when I was really young, um, probably three years old or something like that, way back, uh, I liked puzzles a ton, mm. you know, doing the puzzles and everything. And uh, I, I had the same puzzles that I would do over and over and over, like kids watch movies over and over and over. I did that with puzzles. Nice. And then I got really bored of those puzzles because I'm like, well, I know how to do these. And so I would flip them over and do them upside down where it was just like the brown on the other side. And my mom, being me being young, was just like, hmm, she might be good at some of this spatial awareness. <laughs> so I think that, you know, parents kind of know their kids from an early age, you know, maybe what their strengths are. Um, I definitely, I don't think I had decided on engineering until maybe later in high school. Uh, it's a little ironic because I remember being, enjoying calculus and math and I, in high school, my thought was, if I do a math major, like I'll, I'll have to be like a math teacher. And I didn't want to be a teacher, which is so funny. I <laughs> said, I don't want to be a teacher. I don't, I don't like talking in front of people. I was shy and you know, that just sounds like something I would never want to do. And so mm. I chose engineering so I didn't have to be a teacher, which is hilarious. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it changed. So I chose engineering and mechanical engineering. I felt like electrical was not my thing because you can't see it. It's not as tangible. Mm. That wasn't my thing. Civil engineering didn't happen to be my thing. Uh, mechanic, I was like cars and some of the very basic, you know, mechanical engineering subjects and so that's what seemed like it fit the, like what fit the best for mm. me and then I went all through school and I and I enjoyed that and there was and I liked learning the material I think for me I went and I started working and um, I liked it I think it's another thing where you have to look at who you are and I realized that I liked the subject a lot but I actually liked communicating the subject, maybe even more than doing the engineering itself, mm. which I didn't see coming at all. Right, right. And it turns out that you're very natural in front of people uh, talking. And <laughs> that, that fear from before uh, was unfounded. Yes, yeah. People, As most fear are. People a huge paralyzing factor in life. And I mean, we all, I still learn that lesson over and over with different things. And um, yeah, I was totally afraid of talking in front of people. Even when I decided to be a teacher, I thought, well, I've never taught a class in my life, but I'm going to go back to school and study to become, a, you know, an instructor at the time, you know, as I don't have my PhD, but an instructor. And I thought, well, I hope I like it because I'm going to go for two more years without having taught a class. I hope I don't hate it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was very nervous when I started, when I taught my first class. And, um, but you know what? I did it. I got it over with and then it got easier. So sometimes you just have to go, you know, go all in yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you, uh, you did and you were very successful. So. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> you have a, a background working in two different energy companies. So uh, mm -hmm. this sort of that was a tell for uh, your answer to this question. But um, which areas of mechanical engineering do you work and teach in? Sure. So like you said before, uh, I do teach various labs and those are necessary labs, but um, my specific area of interest and where I have taught a lot of my lecture classes are in um, energy systems, alternative energy systems. So I worked, like you said, for two energy companies, so Seattle City Light and Puget Sound Energy. Seattle City Light is a public utility and um, Puget Sound Energy is a privately owned utility. And 
So I learned a lot about the grid system, uh, generation, transmission, and distribution. I actually did a rotation position at Puget Sound Energy. So I actually did a lot of different things for shorter amounts of time mm. because that was the way the program was set up for new engineers. So you became accustomed to um, different parts of the company. So I was able to see all of the different sides, or many of the different sides of a utility company. And then um, I actually ended up taking, once I went back for my master's, a class in solar panels. And I found it to be really fascinating I think from there, I realized, well, you know what? I have to rewind a little bit more. Even before I worked for these utility companies, I actually took some sustainable energy classes, engineering classes at Seattle Pacific. I actually took three of them. Hmm. They were electives and they focused on different things, but I liked those, I think the most out of my engineering classes. I found it fascinating because, and, and I guess this goes into why I'm interested in it in general, it's not just the engineering, but it's also politics, public policy. There are different factors that enter into this subject. So it's not just the engineering, it's well, it may, maybe this works, but then is it economical or will it ever be economical mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so and there are a lot of different answers to that and people have a lot of different opinions about that totally um, so yeah. yeah so it becomes not only just calculations but it becomes a discussion right about you know what works now what could work later and what's the client not talking about even i mean there's the climate issue but then also the climate of the economy right mm -hmm. and what's you know, how do we balance it out? So I, I enjoy that. So I teach, now I teach the solar panel class mm -hmm. and I also teach an alternative energy class. Mm -hmm. It's um, a undergraduate level, offered at an undergraduate level, both of them in a graduate level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a PhD, but my plan is I have a PhD program that I plan on doing, mm -hmm. and it is an energy engineering PhD. Excellent. So, yeah, so that is part of my plan. Now, Corona and just all this stuff is kind of, you know, we'll see. Yeah. It's, it's on the horizon, but that is where I really love engineering. And um, so those are, the, those are the classes. That's more of my area. And... Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's awesome. Very Thanks. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Yeah, you're, you're right. And this is a, a topic, um, something that um, I've been thinking about uh, lately to, to uh, a greater extent, which is how engineering topics um, have historically been sort of artificially separated from discussions of how uh, people are organized in society and how we make decisions as a group and all that. And that's, that's I think, something that needs to change. I think that the engineers need to sort of uh, own that part of the conversation as well, not just the technical side of things. Um, because I think they're intertwined. And when you're somebody who's trying to optimize or solve issues um, and you're only allowed to work in a corner of, of what's really going on, it's, um, I don't think, as effective. And so I really like uh, when engineers start to think, you know, what, um, in what ways can we consider our work to be a part of uh, the fabric of society more largely and what are the repercussions of my technical understanding uh, for the broader uh, social context. So I, I love that. I loved hearing that um, from you. So, yeah. Um, so you uh, have talked a little bit about the energy uh, uh, stuff, and I want to I, I, I wanna, um, talk a little bit more about, uh, so the concentration that we have uh, that you can do at the undergraduate level uh, and that you can also do uh, during a master's program 
um, that, that is related to this, which is the, the energy systems and uh, fluid systems uh, concentration. And uh, so you've, you've talked about specifically the, you know, the types of energy classes that you teach and uh, some of your background in the field. Um, do you want to kind of expand on um, the concentration more broadly so that, so that students can understand that and um, uh, maybe the, the broader field, uh, you know, alternative energy uh, is an aspect, of course, um, and so is sort of energy policy and, and, and what you've been discussing uh, so far. So um, do you uh, want to kind of help people understand when they hear, you know, uh, energy concentration or energy and fluids concentration, sort of what does that kind of mean? Like, what does that, what does that mean in terms of what types of topics you'd be working on and that type of thing? Okay, so... Um, that's a good question. I have to gather my thoughts on that, but I can tell you that if we're looking at the fluids, like you said, fluids and energy. So for example, there was a student who worked with, um, a professor who actually just left the university, but he was working on some microfluidics. Mm -hmm. Um, Alec, a graduate student, and he, so microfluidics would be on the microscopic level, and so it was looking at flow uh, of, of this fluid, and um, I believe it was in a biomedical uh, application of, like, cilia inside a person's body, mm. I think. So that's a very specific research topic that that master's student did. So that falls into the fluid side of things. And then somebody like me, I went and did my master's and I worked with Dr. Washko and I did a thesis on an internal combustion engine. So that has to do with, um, it had to do with combustion and the valves in an engine and how those are timed and the efficiency and that actually also goes into the same category so you can tell you can see that it's very it's it's broad which is great because you can find something that you're that you're interested in mm -hmm. um so an, an example of an alternative energy system because we throw that around um, alternative energy systems would be wind power or solar power or um, they have, what else do we have? We have tidal power. Mm -hmm. um, then also there is, there are a lot of different what, wave, wave action power. Hmm. They have some that has to do with the, um, the, different, the different temperatures in the ocean and utilizing the difference in temperatures from the top of the ocean to the bottom of the ocean. Mm. So um, there are a lot of different topics that all fall into that one category. So if you're going to do that concentration, there are uh, classes like, uh, well, there, there would be classes like microfluidics. You could take my solar panel class. You could take a combustion engines class. You could take um, my alternative energy systems class that does cover lots of, oh, hydropower. I forgot hydropower is definitely an alternative energy system. Mm, mm. Um, they actually do put nuclear in alternative energy. Now, there's a difference between alternative and sustainable. Right. Alternative is alternative to the coal and the gas, but then sustainable may not, that may not fall into that category. Um, my alternative energy book that I have actually includes the science of fracking. Oh, so huh. there you go. So it, it <laughs> isn't always, you know, it isn't always what you expect. Also, um, if you're looking at energy engineering, they also have energy engineers in the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is absolutely a source of energy. So it can be very broad. I don't know if that answers any questions, that, but I think that, it raises just the right number and answers uh, uh, just the right number. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Glad. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, great. So, do you, 
do you have some research projects that you've been working on, Shelby? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so part of the difference between you and myself would be that because you have a PhD, you do more research. I don't, and that's not a requirement for my position to right. do the research. I, I know that it would be, I mean, your teaching load is very high and you're also yeah. helping with, I mean, all the labs. So you're, you're, I, I would be shocked if you have any research projects in addition to that, but I thought I would ask to see. Well, I'll give you an alternative answer. Um, uh, so when I actually am on a paper that is being, I believe it's being published, I, my name is on it, I did assist a little bit with it, I advised the group who wrote it. And that is a senior design group who did a methane, a micro-methane digester. Uh, so I was one of the advisors with Dr. Duan and the team built a micro methane um, uh, system and it, another form of alternative energy for the Department of Transportation. So um, there was that. I also uh, am involved in a lot of student, uh, student projects. Mm -hmm. So it isn't necessarily the, the research that maybe you would uh, have heard from some of the other, some of the other professors, but for example, I'm advising a team that is casting, well, last year we cast a Bowie knife and it's a national competition. So I advise them. I also, I'm advising them again, a di different, some students are the same, some students are different on the team. This year it's, it's the same competition, but we're casting uh, Thor's hammer and we're partnering with a casting foundry uh, in Tacoma. So that is coming up uh, in the spring. So we have to get our act together. So we're ready to go. Uh, and then I, awesome. I work with a lot of the senior design groups to assist them in their projects. Uh, I also serve on the State Transportation Innovation Council mm. for representing uh, St. Martin's. And that has to do with innovation in highway and highway transportation. So they do, they fund different research projects. Mm. They basically we allocate funds in order to um, allocate funds to different projects that are proposed, whether it's by the state, employees in the state, or um, it could be students or professors. Um, and some other representatives are from the UW and from Wazoo. And then we have some um, folks at the state who are on it. So, mm. I do kind of a lot of different things. Yes, you and do. And then teach and then do the labs and do the, I do lots of different, lots of different things. So, yeah, you know, if you want to know what's going on, I might know what's going on, Just, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I, that is, uh, when I am curious about what's going on with something that has to do, anything to do with something that happens in Panowitz, yeah. I, you're the first person that I go to. Um, and yeah, when a student comes to me with, uh, with, uh, actually this literally happened yesterday, <laughs> a student was like, do we have any wave spring, uh, wave spring washers? And I, you know, I'm like, maybe like it's possible. <laughs> um, and, and you know who I emailed immediately? You. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think that. Um, yeah, you're, you're really sort of a, a very central node to our engineering school network, um, and especially mechanical engineering. Um, I, I'm sure that's true for the other um, majors too, but of course we care less about them. Um, so. <laughs> we, won't, we just won't share this podcast with them. Exactly. This, this is our secret. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Don't send it to the civil engineers or the yeah. computer scientists. Um, they don't need to know. They don't need to no, know. No, they don't need yeah. to know. <laughs> so, uh, great. So, yeah, so you've got a lot of, of student projects. And so your student projects, um, you've, you've, hit on, you've hit on them already. And I, what I am curious about, so I think that a lot of the students that are, you know, in ME100 hope to one day work on a project that involves the machine shop, which you're in charge of, uh, mm -hmm. or the, the robotics lab, which you helped me out a lot with, um, or, or the, the materials testing lab, or the thermal lab. Mm -hmm. And 
getting you know early uh, uh, at least to engine uh, at least to St. Martin's students involved in these projects is something that we really want to encourage and I I want to sort of encourage them now uh, to reach out and and talk to talk to uh, Miss Davis and uh, go to uh, her office which is in the Panowitz foundry um, very visibly at the end of the hall uh, yeah. so what's the, what's the number? Panowitz. 125. 125. That's a good number. Um, yeah. So yeah, I encourage you to, to, to talk to her. I know that uh, you know she's got a lot on her plate, but she's always uh, so cheerful and happy to discuss things with students. So uh, sure, yeah, definitely, Absolutely. definitely recommend. Can I give it. an example of a student that came to me like last week? Yes, this please, a please. Pretty good one. Okay, so one of my students who's a uh, he's a senior, and he had this idea about a wind turbine. Uh, a wind turbine modification and so he just came to me with this idea like you know do you think this would work and i actually just, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know good question we should you should you know maybe make a little prototype or something so he uh i said maybe 3d print it and uh and we'll go from there and so he mm. did end up uh making like a little little mock-up of it mm -hmm. and he said so can we put this in the wind tunnel and test it out so I was like, yeah let's do it so we made a time to meet and uh it was, I don't know, a couple fridays ago so we put this this thing in the wind tunnel and he looked at the voltage to see if, um mm -hmm. you know with and without this modification to see if it would make a difference mm -hmm. and uh surprisingly it was the opposite it actually didn't make the difference which we wouldn't have found out if we didn't test it yeah right but um you know that's an example of just what us one student who had this idea and so right. yeah i mean yeah. you guys made it happen and that's that's yeah. really cool i mean like just for for those who don't know getting access to a wind tunnel is a challenging thing uh to do getting access to somebody who has the expertise to help you run the wind tunnel is even more challenging to do <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah so that's really cool it's something that, that I love about what you've done with the, the the labs at St. Martin's is just make them so available to students and um, you're so good at making sure that, that they have the resources they need to to try out their ideas and and um, yeah just play with them I mean that question I you know it, it sounds like it went from an idea to a test in like a matter of weeks uh he did it over the weekend so or maybe over the week i don't know i think he might have asked me let's see on a tuesday and we tested it on a friday wow something like that he kind of he did it at home you know he was excited about it so yeah. so yeah it was um it was fun i mean you know i carved out some time as long as we made an appointment and that's the thing you know people come to me and ask me stuff like that or you know just things and I'll just say, okay, well, you know, I can't do it now, but let's set up a time, whether it's, you know, this week or maybe next week or something. And I try and do that. Now, sometimes it's a lot harder than others, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it, it's, it's fun for me too. So yeah, I like, yeah. I like, I like, uh, or, or if I don't know, or if I don't know, I usually am able to find, have suggestions on who would know. So for mm -hmm. example, I did have a student who came to me and said, we need to cut a tire into like quarters or something. And they said, can we do that in the shop? And I'm thinking like, I don't think I have anything in the shop that's gonna cut a tire. Huh. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think so. Yeah. And so uh, what, I, what I suggested was that they go over to the makerspace, which is on campus mm -hmm. and they have more hand tools and whatnot. And so they actually went over there, I texted the director and asked him is this okay if they come over he said well yeah have them come over and so they i just saw a video of them hacking up this tire it was for some project i don't know wow. but anyway yeah stuff like that if i don't know i'll find somebody who does know that's so cool yeah yeah i mean i so and this is great you know and you know why i like that particular story i mean how are you going to cut up this tire it, it really reinforces the argument that I have for why I really want to get a katana uh, sword um, because you never know when you're going to need to cut up a tire for instance and yeah. you know I feel like it's not the worst way at least so no. 
You know, that was actually, I thought about it and I was like, do I have a sword? No, I must have gotten rid of mine. So. Oh, yeah. The classic story of accidentally getting rid of your sword just before you needed it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, sure. dang it. <laughs> Do you like the show? I don't know if you've ever seen it, the Santa Clarita Diet with Drew Barrymore in it. What about like zombies? Oh yeah. I've never seen it. I know what it is though. Oh my god. I I want to say it's like it's like trash TV, right? I mean, obviously. Sure. But that's some of the best TV. Oh my god, I love it. It's so good. It's like it's so funny and just ridiculous and over the top. And Drew Barrymore is just like all cute and zombie. Um, so Isn't it's great. it um, Timothy Oliphant is in that too? Yeah. 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 Yep. I I have seen the preview and it did look good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll it's... check it out now that we're in, you know, kind of semi quarantine. We've got a lot more time. Exactly. I guess. You can't zoom all the time. You can't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> I don't think anybody does. No. 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 <laughs> So, uh, great. So we've actually, you know, kind of covered a lot of the, the topics that I wanted to ask you about. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to, uh, and you, you made an allusion to this earlier, get on your soapbox oh, and yeah. give advice to uh, uh, students who are new to mechanical engineering and then also students who are new to St. Martin's. So uh, here you go. Here I go. Okay, so this might be advice that is maybe a little bit for later on, but I think it's still it's still relevant. So I work with primarily juniors and seniors. I teach those level of classes and and the seniors they're they're typically looking for jobs. And so my soapbox is probably a little bit more on that vein. But you know what? If you're a freshman and a sophomore, it'll be here for before you know it. So um, one of the first things that I would suggest is when you are in your junior year, you should start looking for an internship. Mm. The internship between junior and senior year is really important. And uh, just find one. It, you know what? Don't be picky. Just find one because you will quickly find out what you love and what you absolutely do not want to do for the rest of your life. And that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what? You won't know until you try it. So go get an internship and then and learn how to have an engineering job. You mm -hmm. can always, you know, go into something else a different time, but that is really important. And it looks really good when you are going to go out and get a permanent engineering job the following year. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that, that looks really good on a resume. Sometimes, actually a lot of the time, when you have an internship with a, with a company, they will keep you in mind or set up something where you can actually just come on full time after you graduate as a senior. So, mm. and those internships are paid typically. They should be paid. I mean, you should take a paid one. Engineering internships are paid. Um, so, so it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. A little money, get some experience, they get the help they need. And so transitioning, I wrote some of these things down. That's great. I, I, I do. I, it was, it, I love how prepared you are for this. Yeah. Much more than I am. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I've had this conversation with a lot of juniors and seniors, so I'm, re I'm ready for this question. That's awesome. Um, I also would suggest when you're going to go out and apply for internships and all of that, um, put together a resume. And I cannot stress enough, proofread your resume. Like spell check that. Spell check it, you know, look for those, look for those words that are missing and have someone else read it, take it to the career center, take it to a professor, do all of those things. If COVID, if and when COVID is over, go to the career fairs, talk to people and, um, you know, you never know what can open up opportunities for you. I think that we're doing right. some virtual career fairs yeah. still. So that's, yeah. I think that there's still some opportunity there, but of course. It's not mm -hmm. as fun. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, there's a virtual one. I think it's next Wednesday. I think I yeah. saw that on the on the email that I received. Nice. So yeah, those are great. So if that's the way it is, then do that. Uh, and then I tell students. So typically, students who 
our seniors, they, and even if they don't have an internship, they come to me and they say like, I don't know what to put on my resume. You know, I don't have any work experience or I have work experience, but it's like, you know, at the auto shop or something. And, um, you know, I say, you know, put, put some, put the work experience on there, but also I tell them and they don't realize this, put projects that you've done in classes on your resume and what mm. those projects consist of. I mean, I have students design a solar panel system in my class and I'm like put that on your resume and t say what it is because it's not like you've never done any engineering before mm -hmm. so uh or club projects or anything like that yeah. that you've been involved in so I think people forget that they actually have a lot of knowledge by the time they go through four years so uh, I think they get intimidated by some of those job uh job postings where it's like how you know you need two or three years of experience before you have any experience but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um <laughs> i also tell students and this is true with any job rather whether it's engineering or just any summer job i tell them when they because they ask me for interview advice and i say you need to go in and make this interview about the employer and not about you mm. because you have to i mean you, you're interviewing the company, but you don't have a lot of experience right now. And so you need to, them to know how you can help them. Mm. It's not about how they can help you. Okay. So right. um, that's a huge thing, uh, especially when you don't have a lot of experience in the field. So um, I could go, I could go on for a you long can, time. You should, you should go on. This is a so I, al <laughs> I also would tell you know, students that they should remember to be humble and that they do not know everything and never will. Mm. Because I think that it's really easy if you're in these advanced classes. I mean, you're smart, of course. You know, you have to be smart to get through this. Mm -hmm. But we also will never know everything. And so being open to continue, being open to learning and learning from people who have done things for longer than you and have more life experience is really important. Mm -hmm. So I think that's easily, I think that can be forgotten. And I think it's so important and it helps you be successful. Mm. So, um, and then I have a couple more things. So here's a great quote that I'm going to steal from someone great and it says and you'll know who everyone will know who this is <laughs> the great philosopher of our time mm. uh, opportunity looks a lot like hard work Ashton Kutcher <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Ashton Kutcher wow that but 70s really, show huh that but, 70s yeah. show just oh yes. man the uh, so, uh, I love it. It's like the it's like the mythology of our time. That '70s show. So yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know. So I mean, but I really like I really like that quote. You know, whether it's I mean, you know, from the guy who played Kelso, it's still it's still good. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is, um, when you're going through all of these heavy classes, which you will get into some times where there's just a lot of work to do. You know, and you're thinking a lot and, um, you know, thinking hard about all, all of the, the heavy engineering um, stuff you're learning. I know for me, even now, and I don't know about, I, I don't know, I can't speak for Dr. Pony, but um, I like to have an artistic outlet or a stress management outlet. Mm. So um, you can't think hard constantly. Yeah. So, you know, having something that you do, whether it's work out or whether it's, you know, I don't know, painting or mm -hmm. who knows. I what mean, do you what do you do? Hard. What's your what do I do? What's your outlet? What is my outlet? Um, so I recently purchased a house and I am someone who likes to and this sounds funny. <laughs> I like to um decorate and reorganize my house mm -hmm. you'll see like i i'm a i'm somebody who putters in my house I'm like oh i can put this plant over here or this fake plant over here and you know what i really like it i go to garage sales i pick up stuff that i like making old things you know new again mm -hmm. um so i uh like to do that kind of thing i'm really into in 
interior design, which is very much an artistic thing. Mm -hmm. It's probably the only artistic thing I do. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I mean, it's hey, me. it can be anything. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, we use one side of our brain so much mm -hmm. that it it's really good for you to take a break on that side of the brain. Yeah, yeah, that's such a good one. I like that one a lot. I um. So just to, not to interrupt you too much, but no, I, I'm done. So go ahead. Oh yeah. wow! So yeah, so that actually, um, so la I well, just a few days ago, it was Monday uh, in my uh, master's class, M M E five hundred two, the intro to engineering analysis, like the the engineering analysis one mathematical foundations course. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing a lot of probability theory things random variables and uh i decided that we would do this this fun thing in class because so i've got this in like the the usual thing in a lot of my classes i have um this flipped classroom design where there's the pre-recorded lectures and then we have like discussion in class and then we work problems and all that uh, and so we worked the problem, and it was to make random walk art. Um, and so I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, the random walk as a, as a mathematical process, but uh, you can think of it in, in the form that I always think of it when I think of a random walk, is you think of like a 2D grid and that um, you have some particle, say, that starts off at one position, and it will ran it will uh, evolve in time by by randomly moving one step in random directions, mm -hmm. and they do all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, it's really interesting to see. And you can use this sort of mathematical model, which is a probability model, uh, for modeling a lot of um, physical processes, including a lot of like molecular dynamics stuff. Um, like protein folding and their heat transfer. There's all kinds of things you can use this for. You can estimate diffusion co coefficients by simulation. And I, I was like, I like, I, so this random walk is like a cool thing to play with. So, but I think that the shapes that they make um, are kind of cool. And I wanted us to in the class come up with a, a simulator that would would do random walks, and that I, we wrote it in Python. Um, we would start out at different positions, and then we would evolve the walks uh, in time. And they would—I had them color in different colors, and then have like a an opacity, like a like a little shade, like so you could see through them, and like the colors could interfere with each other. Yeah. Um, so each walk had its own color, and we started them out in random positions, and it, it was. There were some really fun ones that came out of it. So I, like I threw it up on GitHub, and like some of the grad students have been working on it. It's, like since then, uh, after the class, because it was fun, um, and yeah. like it's like abstract art kind of. Um, yeah. And it mixed in some of the. So it was like nerdy art, but it was kind of fun. Uh, so I like creating like fun things like that. The week before we we uh, simulated the Monty Hall problem which is like a fun, like, um, so there was a game show called Let's Make a Deal. And there were th yeah. three doors that the contestant had to choose from. And Monty Hall was apparently the, the, the host of the show. And so uh, Monty would say, okay, um, you know, pick a door. And uh, they'd pick a door, but they wouldn't open the door. And then Monty knew which door had the car and which doors had the goats. So he would open a door that you didn't choose uh, that had the goat behind it. And uh, then he'd say, okay, you can stick with your choice or uh, you can switch to the other. I mean, obviously, you don't want to choose the one that has the goat clearly in it. Uh, and somebody sent a letter into Reader's Digest, I think, like in the 70s or something, um, looking at this, the, the probability of this and, like, is there a better like, – should you change? Like, what's the best strategy probabilistically? And uh, intuitively, a lot of people felt like strategically you should stick with your choice because, like, he's trying to throw you off. Um, some people were like, it's no, it's 50 50. Like at that point, like so like you could just you could stick with what when you got or you could change it. It doesn't matter. It's our probability is the same. But very strangely and unintuitively, the correct answer is that if you change, you have two thirds chance of getting the car. If you stick with your choice, you have a one-third chance. 
And that was that freaked people out. Uh, and I have always, to this day, like I, it's like I've heard, I've heard the explanations, and like they always seem they seem plausible. Like the explanations are plausible. However, I just never quite trusted it. So. What we did in class was we did a simulator where we had like a contestant to like choose a door and then like decide to switch randomly or decide to stick with their door. And sure enough, um, you know, after like 10,000 runs through, it was very clear that there was about a two thirds probability of getting it right if you uh, or getting the car if you switched and one third if you stuck with it. So I know it was it's like it's very weird. Um, but I, uh, so like, I like doing these sorts of fun problems and sometimes I do them just for like my own enjoyment, I guess. Uh, yeah. uh, so I, I don't know that it reminded me. Um, yeah. You know, what's funny about that is that, that I didn't know what that was called that, that, um, you know, the door, I, I actually remember seeing this it was in a movie. I think I'm right on this. It's been a while. But I think that that was in the movie 21, Ooh. where it's about this true story about um, students at MIT that counted cards in Vegas on the weekends. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was I did watch that movie. It's... I think that is in that movie in the beginning and the professor's talking about that. And all the kids, all the students were like the same reaction. They're like, what? It's been a long time since I've seen that, but I'm pretty sure that's in that movie. That's and it's, so cool. uh, yeah, it's got statistics and probability, so it makes sense. I liked that movie, as I recall. So I actually liked that movie too. Yeah. I also like true stories, so it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. So there's a plug. There's a plug for us. Well, I think any story where nerds like win a bunch of money by outsmarting other people, I'm gonna like it. Like there's, yeah, it's yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a true thing. And I remember this one scene where the guy had all of this money he'd won from Vegas and he's just hiding these just giant stacks of money in the, you know, the ceiling tiles in his dorm room. Mm. He went up there and just got all this, all this money. It was really interesting. Wow. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. You know what? I mean, <laughs> that's why I closed my closet before I started because I had to hide all of my just all of my cash. That's that was smart. That was smart. Yeah. I'll edit yeah. this part out so they don't know. Yeah. Well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Could you cut that part? I will. Yeah. Totally. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Uh, <laughs> so, well, I you know that's all uh, all the questions I have for you. Uh, thanks so much, Shelby, for joining us and um, being such a uh, an enjoyable presence on campus and and part of the department. Well, thank you so much for having me, Dr. Bacone. I really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. Man, podcasts are the best. I know, right? Wow. Yeah, it makes me want to start my own. Yeah, you should. Know, you should. You should. Like, I, you know, I don't know what it's. You know, I, what I would suggest maybe like uh, uh, Panowitz Foundry from the inside, <laughs> or like, or like, uh, like Drunk Engineer, or something. Like, <laughs> th those, uh, those ones where they get drunk. Those podcasts are very popular. So. You know what? I bet that would be pretty hilarious. I've not heard any, but now that I know that's a thing. Yeah, there's like, there's drunk history. Um, oh, man. Where they get drunk and tell you about this history. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and that's pretty, it's pretty funny. It's pretty interesting. Um, and then, I'm not a big podcast guy, honestly, if I have to yeah. confess, but... Uh, I'm, I, I listen to more audio books, which I love. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's, uh, there's another one. Oh, God, what did I listen to? Oh, it was like uh, like murder. It was like these like three women. I think they were all named Karen, actually. Um, uh, and they would like drink wine and, and like and like read uh, these like strange murder stories, like like true stories oh. of like murder. Um, yeah, what is that one called? I've heard that one actually. Yep, I don't remember what that's called, but I've heard that. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get I, like somebody's gonna be pissed about me saying it like that. They might not have all been named Karen. I'm pretty sure they <laughs> were though. Um, well, I I do listen to some podcasts. There's one that I have listened to 
that is a fun podcast. It's called Spitballers. Mm. And that one is just a couple, three guys, I don't know. And they just sit around and kind of like talk about not, a lot of nothing. There's a lot of would you rather. They'd ask like the mm. would you rather questions and they're kind of stupid questions. And it's just just a bunch of nothing. And you know what? It's kind of fun because it's kind of nice to listen to nothing after, you know, Corona and all that kind of stuff. Right. So. Yeah, no, at this point, like lean into all of your coping mechanisms. That's my yeah. advice. Like if you if you like to like watch trash TV or like ice cream bars or whatever like just like you know get through this time um and uh you know on the other side you can work on it <laughs> i i was all on board with the tiger king phenomena so i i know what i know what this what the coping mechanisms are like yeah nice yeah see i i somehow resisted that or like you know the thing though so this is what this is my mo about this i will usually avoid things when they're happening and then like sometimes I will later go back and see what that was all about. Um, mm, yeah. I see. I think it's yeah. just to be cool, to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't, eh, Tiger yeah, King. Yeah, I wasn't into that. Know. Yeah. Um, and I secretly sneak back. I'm like, was this, what was this about? Uh, well, you know, one thing that you told me about that I still need to watch, you told me about this a long time ago, and I know I need to watch it because I've heard this from many people, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. It's really the only show you need to watch. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's my all-time favorite show. Um, yeah. I, I know, and I, and I need to do it because it is something that I know I like. So. Yeah, it's so, uh, like, weird and northwesty, and then yeah. David Lynch. Oh, it's old. It's way back. Yeah. Well, then there's a new season. There's a season three. Well, mm -hmm. relatively. I think it came out, like, two years ago or something. Mm -hmm. And... It's, it's like the return after like 25 years. And what's weird is that it was predicted in the like second season. Like there were two seasons 25 years ago. And then they were like, see you in 25 years. Like in the middle of the show, not like, not the, like the last episode. And then like 25 years later, it comes back. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. It's all yeah. part. It's all connected. It's all connected. Yes. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so well uh thanks again <laughs> thanks again so much uh i'll let you get back to your evening and uh your adorable dog sunny oh yes she's right here oh can we see Did her you make a cameo yeah okay. i'm sure i'm sure everybody would love to see it that be okay this yes. is my dog i love her <laughs> she's a year a year a year and a half old maybe oh Sunny. Oh, she's kind of a fuzzy face right now. Sunny, what you looking at? Oh, anyway, so so precious. My Corona, Corona buddy. Oh my god. Anyway, well, thank you so much. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yes, thanks again to you, and I, I, I'll see you see you around the engineering school. Yes, sounds good. All right, have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.